This is 8-Minute Market Structure by Texture Capital, bringing you concise, expert insight for better markets. And now your host, Richard Johnson. Hello and welcome to the sixth episode of 8-Minute Market Structure, where I speak with industry experts and get their take on the most important market structure issues. It's a simple format, uh, same question for every guest. If you were building a new market structure from scratch and could change one thing, what would it be? One topic, no prep calls, just eight minutes of concise expert insight for better markets. My name is Richard Johnson. I'm the founder and CEO of Texture Capital. We're a FINRA member and SEC registered broker dealer specializing in digital asset securities. We help companies uh, and institutions more efficiently and directly participate in private markets by providing tools for tokenization, issuance, and secondary market trading. Today's guest is my friend and former colleague, Kevin McPartland. Kevin is head of market structure uh, and technology for Greenwich Associates or Greenwich Coalition, as it's now called. Um, he's a lead analyst for the fixed income practice and also manages across equities, fintech and technology. Prior to Greenwich, Kevin was at BlackRock and before that at Tab Group, where he gained a reputation as an OTC derivatives expert and has testified before the Senate Banking Committee on swaps execution facilities. So, Kevin, it's safe to say you know a thing or two about market structure, so let's get into it. If you were designing a new market structure from scratch and could change one thing, what would it be? Great. Well, thanks for having me, Richard. It's awesome uh, to be here. And I, uh, I, I definitely go with, uh, we did not prep, so we're, we're going we're gonna to take this naturally. Yeah. Uh, so if I think through the evolution of OTC markets, fixed income markets more broadly over the last sort of 10 or 15 years, um, we've gone through a, you know, an evolution of a few sort of different types of trading. We've had a lot of conversation about things that can, quote, never be done. We've seen a lot of those things happen in the last 10 years, right? Trading less liquid security. So if we were to start today, so I, I think one of the most important things would be to create uh, a trading mechanism that allows the counterparties to know each other but to still do that in an electronic way. So, I, I mean, I can explain a little bit, right? So if we think about anonymous order book trading, right? Mm -hmm. Traditional equity markets, um, that can work where there's a lot of market participants where it's heavily retail. If we look at fixed income markets uh, or OTC markets more broadly, right? And that is a heavy, heavily institutional market. You do not have that retail component. So you're talking about larger trade sizes, a lot more money at stake. Um, and so, you know, so so RFQ was fine, and it's really what got things going. It was it's still used today. It's a twenty, arguably maybe a hundred year old protocol. Um, but again, it's it, there's a lot of information leakage involved, right? You're having to request. That means the market knows what you're doing. Um, uh, so today, right now, we have ways where you can send prices, um, interest directly to specific people. Um, if we were to take it a few steps further, and you'll know this better than I do, there is. Um, definitely some interesting ideas around distributed ledger and how you can control who can see mm -hmm. what and who, what, right, to maybe even make that more efficient. Um, so I think that would be it. That would be the changes to create these electronic mechanisms, regardless of how liquid a security is, how many market participants there are, that allows both the sort of provider of liquidity and the, and the taker of liquidity um, to have a lot more control and the ability to uh, understand who their counterparties are but still do that with the same sort of electronic high-speed efficiency that we see in more traditional electronic markets. Okay, great. So I'm not a fixed income expert, so you're going to have to educate me a bit here. So the request for quote market, that's typically between a buy side institution and a broker dealer. Is that correct? Correct. So think about a large asset manager. They have a huge block of bonds they want to sell. They know the four or five sort of dealers that are probably going to give them the best price or maybe have those bonds in inventory. So they will send a request and say, hey, I have uh, I, I need to buy, you know, five million dollars worth of this bond. You know, what will it cost me? Right. And then they yeah. wait for those responses to come back. They know who they came from and then they can pick the best price and off yeah. they go fast and efficient for sure. Um, but there is definitely a lot of information leakage involved on both sides there. Right. So, so that, but that's been in place for years. So there's been that, you know, knowledge that, the, you know, the, obviously the institution knows which broker he send, he's requesting it from and the broker knows what institution is on the other side. Then I guess is, is what you're saying is we've moved to kind of more electronic and there, there were, I guess, you know, information leakage issues with that. And now we've moved to kind of more electronic order type, order book type markets where the, where they, 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 they're, you know, the counterparties don't know each other at all. 
And whilst I think you're saying maybe there's less information leakage, you're also giving up some kind of, uh, you know, some kind of textures to the trade or some understanding that would enable one party to price it better. Right, which is why I think what we're going to, what we're seeing this, but it's taking a long time because there's a lot of sort of, uh, you know, long understood uh, and, you know, programmed processes in the yeah. market that have people working in certain ways. But what we're seeing more and more of is this idea that um, dealers can send, you know, prices sort of on an ongoing basis of what they're willing to buy or sell a whole host of securities at. Um, obviously, sort of the compute power that the dealers have today allows them to do that. Um, and then the, you know, the asset manager, the hedge fund, the liquidity taker can sort of aggregate all of those pricing streams they're getting in from those dealers um, sort of into one view where they can then see what the price is and decide what they want to do before going out to the market and sort of showing their hand. Uh, and to me, it really is the best of both worlds between a request for quote an RFQ where you have that bilateral understanding and an order book where it's anonymous um, uh, you're seeing sort of that, that sort of perfect in between that gives both sides a lot more control, but yeah. still the efficiency uh, of a sort of more traditional electronic market. Yeah. And I guess we had, uh, we, we had kind of the, you know, the buy side networks in fixed income as well, but, but they, how did they plan, plan out? Cause I know there's kind of lots of people trying different types of all to all one to many buy side networks. Yeah, so so I think when it started, the conversation was about buy side to buy side, sort yeah. of in a vacuum. I think the whole conversation's evolved a lot in the last ten years to go from that buy side to buy side idea to the sort of more traditional all to all idea. And there's a lot of evidence that that has worked out well. That those marketplaces have allowed and have active trading between dealers. They have dealers taking liquidity from the buy side, they have buy side taking the liquidity from each other. And then of course, the buy side still taking liquidity from dealers. So you're seeing sort of every permutation yeah. of those market participants amongst one another. It doesn't work for all securities, it doesn't work for all orders, but it's certainly a, a, a real piece of the toolkit now for anybody looking to get an order done in those markets. Yeah, so okay, I think I'm being understand what you're saying now. When I think of equity markets, there's this concept of segmentation, which I'm sure you're familiar with, where more at the smart router level, the buy side could say, well, uh, you know, I'll, inter I'll interact with anyone. They can be retail, they can be institutional, uh, it can be market makers, wh whatever, high frequency traders, I just want the liquidity. And other, other parties would say, no, I only want to introduce with natural flow on the institutional side. And, um, you know, that, that had some success, but I think a lot of what the time people would, would cut out the electronic market makes and the hedge and the high frequency traders and find they weren't getting any liquidity. It seems like what you kind of want to do something, you're thinking about something similar, but move it upstream a little bit. So almost the quotes are kind of based on this segmentation. Like, oh, that quotes from this type of counterparty, there may be more behind that. I want to preference that one first. Right, and what we're, what we're trying, the problems that the market and technology is trying to solve um, are actually quite complicated, but I do think we're getting there. If you're if you're a sort of an asset manager, you want to see as much sort of data and information about the state of the market as possible, without having to give uh, any transparency into what you are doing or want to do. And then, as a dealer, you want as much distribution of your uh, sort of liquidity and pricing as possible, but you don't want more competition, right? You don't want to democratize things either because then that that's going to make it harder for you to yeah. make money. You're, for both sides, they're trying to find that perfect blend of getting as much as they can with while giving as little as possible. Um, and it does seem that technology, distributed ledgers, one good example, is sort of making it more possible than before to construct market structures that allow that sort of best of both worlds um, yeah. for uh, building liquidity. And I guess the, the other thing maybe we should have mentioned at the top is that the market data in fixed income is different. There's no consolidated quotes. So a lot of companies like patching together where the liquidity is has been become quite an exercise. Yeah, well, you know, it's been, you know, the SEC has been talking about it a lot. Chairman Gensler has been in the news talking about how important pre-trade transparency is in bond markets. There's post-trade reporting in bond markets, but there is no sort of NBBO in the bond market, right? So it is, it's about piecing together evaluated pricing and last trade prices and maybe quotes if you're a market participant you're seeing from a dealer, or if you have multiple platforms, you can see what they're listing as prices, but it is, yeah, it's quite an exercise to piece that together. And so um, the puzzle people, each market participant puts together could look completely different. Yeah. 
Excellent, Kevin. Uh, we are. We could. We could go on talking. Of course, we could talk forever, but then it wouldn't be eight-minute market structure. Um, thank you for your time very much. I'd love to have you back on in the future, and you can give me some ideas for how uh, blockchains can can add to even more improvements in the fixed income space. I would love to do that. Thanks for having me. Thanks a lot. Take care. This has been Eight Minute Market Structure. Be sure to follow Texture Capital on LinkedIn, where we will release a new episode every week. You can also find us on Twitter at texture underscore capital and on the web at texture.capital. The foregoing discussion is for information purposes only and does not constitute a solicitation to buy or sell securities. Private securities offerings are not registered with the SEC and are considered highly speculative. An investment in private securities may result in the loss of your entire capital contribution. Blockchain is a new technology and unproven in financial markets. There is no guarantee that tokenization will enable any secondary market liquidity in the future and your investment may